Welcome back to the International 3 group stage. We're watching LGD Int versus Rattlesnake. My name is Purge and I'm here with Marie Lenny. Let's get into the game, guys. Draft yep. is well underway. And go figure, Rattlesnake banned Batrider. We see this a lot from teams when they lose pretty hard. They somewhat go on tilt and be like, wow, what was our problem for last game? And they just don't want to deal with Bat. They don't want to deal with Lifestealer. They banned out Bat and they took Lifestealer on their own. Mm -hmm. And... Like, why didn't they do that the first game? It's clearly just just for their opponent, but I, I feel like you should have been they should have been prepared for this going into game one. You don't want to just drop yep. a game simply because you let Bat through Ten the pool. And remaining. it's not like Bat's is like new or particular to LGDN. I just I, I don't know why they were unprepared for that. Maybe they really felt like their lanes would match up in the beginning of the drafting. They tried to pull things together with their last couple of picks, and then all of a sudden they had them in a trap, you know? And it was like, well, I guess we're <laughs> safe laning co <-op." laughs> And anytime that happens, or maybe they thought the lanes would be different, mm. like it would be co -op versus a different hero or something. They had good bands, though. I think that LG didn't have, they banned out Weaver, uh, which is pretty good versus, uh, pr lanes up pretty well versus uh, the Batrider, too. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, LGD and just had a very good. Uh, lineup for Bat to thrive in. Yeah, that's definitely true. Um, we see a very respected Storm ban towards Lan M there. Also a Nexus Assassin, a lot of stun heroes here. I guess they're expecting possibly more carries coming out of Rattlesnake, despite them... Oh, I'm sorry, uh, those are the first two bans, but Weaver and Lifesteal is what Rattlesnake has. I don't really expect to see that many more carry bans. Uh, probably just some mid-heroes. Can do an offline Weaver, that's a pretty strong hero to have against different ones. Uh, Visage, for example, isn't the best against Weaver, because there's no hard disable, just a soft one, so he can easily escape that. And they actually do grab another carry, it's going to be a Gyro. So, what do you think this is going to be, like a Lifestealer mid versus Dragonite? Probably, that's what LGD did last game, but I think that LGD is probably a little bit more flexible than Rattlesnake. I think that, well, we can probably tell just by their heroes, right? Lon M usually plays mid. If he pl plays life, he'll probably go mid. And because of that, LGD, I think, can kind of sort of dodge that. But at the same time, they have G, who usually goes mid, too. So still a little bit too early to tell. Uh, in case you're unaware of the format, the first team actually gets to pick side or pick. And it looks like LGD is going to be radiant side twice in a row because they picked, uh, they they wanted first pick, or Rattlesnake wanted to decide first. I'm not exactly uh, sure. LGD asked for first pick this game, so mm -hmm. Rattlesnake called Dire. Okay, which gives them better access to Roshan. Um, it gives their mid a slight disadvantage because checking the top rune mm -hmm. is a bit farther, but. The Roshan part is kind of nice, and depending on what heroes you're working yeah. with, jungling is a bit easier. I think their ancient stacking is a bit easier and safer too. It's less likely someone will steal those, in mm -hmm. my opinion. But it's more difficult for mid. So it just yeah, depends on what true. heroes you are. I think in general, most most pro teams would prefer first pick over uh, over side. Mm -hmm. I think Dire does have an Ten advantage, but remaining. the first pick is just really, really strong. You're not forced to ban out Bat Rider. You're not forced to ban Five out Wisp, and because of that, your your draft opens up a lot more. And that's way that's a way bigger advantage than the slight uh, Roshan advantage because there are some benefits to being on Radiant too. You have uh, somewhat safer um, lanes. You have your jungle that's. Uh, you can eat the tree and double pull a lot easier, and even triple pull. You can't really do that on uh, the Dire side. So mo most teams would consider. I, I don't exactly know why Rattlesnake is going to pick Dire twice in a row. Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Um, not quite sure either. They're going to pick up a Bane as their fourth hero. That'll be at least their one support. So that gives them one good disable uh, when he grabs his ulti. They'll have Nightmare to set things up as well. It's really useful with Rocket Barrage, for example, in a safe lane. If somebody gets out of position, Nightmare, set up the Rocket Barrage, or a call down. Mm -hmm. Go for the kills. But I'm a little worried about Five dealing with that Naga Siren right now. I guess they do have Flak Cannon for AoE, but that's all they have for AoE at the moment, other than, like, Sakuchi or Infest. Right. Uh, Naga Siren I like with their ultimate, but they don't really have anything that can follow. You have, like, Visage stuns, and that's about it. Do you think it's going to be a support Naga or a farming Naga? Mm, I think it's going to be a... I mean, knowing LGDN, probably a... Uh, they'll probably play more aggressive, which means probably a support Naga with a more aggressive carry. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think it's kind of versus Lifesteal. I would have liked to see like an earlier Darkseer pick. Darkseer was banned out in the second stage by Rattlesnake. I think if they wanted to plan out for Naga Siren into like some Wombo combo, they could have done with uh, slightly stronger lanes because LGD is a kind of team that really wants a good start. Like they, if they get off to lead in the first 15 minutes, they'll usually snowball into the rest of the game. And if they lose their lanes, they're they're not really a great comeback team, I'd say. So I think they really need to solidify their early game lead. And like Nature's Prophet is good for coming back, but it's not particularly suited to their play style. Yeah, I feel like neither team really has that extremely strong of an early game. Uh, Rattlesnake obviously has great lanes. Lifesteal and Weaver are always going to be fantastic in the early lane, but there's not a lot of disables in an LGD. And they'll have uh, an Ensnare and a Grave Chill and some nukes from Visage. 
but Nature's Prophet, I always feel like, makes a big liability because it's a hero that really doesn't do that much the first mm. eight minutes, especially if he grabs Even that Midas. Even eight, I'd say. Yeah, Magic definitely. I was giving him a lot of <laughs> <laughs> a lot of leeway there. It's like you get your Midas by six to eight minutes, and then you wait till you have boots, and then maybe you're kind of right-clicking stuff. Right. But that's about it. It's going to be a Chen from Rattlesnake again. We've seen a lot of teams do the Life Stealer and Bane pickup. It's um, Bane is a traditional, like, I wouldn't say hard counter. Uh, he's kind of a hard counter to life sealer. So, I mean, it's kind of sort of a deny pick, but it also works well with him on your team. Uh, if they wanted to do more of a push strat with Chen, I, I, I like, like, you know, two or three heroes for push. For example, Leshrac as a support is very Ten good for pushing. Uh, but if I, I think that our lineup's like decently well rounded, they have like Five okay AoE with remaining. Gyrocopter, like decent late game with Life Steel Weaver or Gyrocopter, like decent lanes. So it's a well, well balanced Five strategy. Seven. Nothing like last game where it was like, okay, we're going to try and kill you with our mass invis plus gank. Plus trap. Yeah. Too bad that Mass Invis doesn't work very well. When yeah, you have a not gem. when you have a gem. Nor for a bad rider that just picks anyone off so you can't carry a gem for yourself or yeah. any sort of sentry rewards. But LGD will suffer in the uh, way in the bit of lanes right now. So they're debating their last pick right now. Uh, looking at the last ban from Rattlesnake, it looked like a Razor. So I think that they think that it's going to be like a safe lane, it safe lane pick could up. Be, could be off lane profit mid Dragonite and mm -hmm. then a Visage Naga something. Yeah, if it's not uh, got something. Preferably ranged, I would say, but it doesn't have to be. Even something, no, it can't be, it probably won't be a Luna. Luna's doesn't do much against I think they need AoE, but. just so they don't get, like, pushed down very early, and just so they can put out some early game pressure so that Nature's Prophet gets his room to farm and shine, and so they don't take too heavy losses from picking Nature's Prophet. Naga Siren's, like, very weak without levels. Visage is, like, decent in triple lane, but in terms of anti-push, he's not that strong. Nature's Prophet, pretty useless. And it looks like Shadowfield wow. will be the last so. pick. There's the AoE you were talking about. Again, <laughs> another hero that's very good against Life Stealer in the mid to late game. Once you have more levels up, you'll have mm. Presence of the Dark Lord, his third skill, which is an, a minus armor passive. It does minus six armor at four levels, and it helps a ton versus Life Stealer. And same thing goes against Gyrocopter, who's going to get a BKB, against Weaver, who might have a BKB. It's going to help them cut through those heroes big time. And that's right. going to stack with Naga Siren's Riptide. So a lot of minus armor AoE coming out of LG. Yeah, minus armor strategies are pretty ridiculous because BKB often does not do that much versus it. Yep. So let's go over the players quick. For LGD Int, we've got Pycat playing Shadowfiend, Miseries on the Visage. Brax is going to be playing Nature's Prophet, 1437 on the Naga Siren. And G is, of course, going to be playing Dragon Knight. So a little bit of a role reversal because 1437 played the Visage last game. And I'm surprised that they didn't stick it on him. I thought he played a pretty good Visage. And huh, that's a good point. On Maybe the side of Rattlesnake, we have Luo on the Life Steal. We have Icy on the Weaver. Lon M on the Gyrocopter. He typically plays solo mid, so I assume it's a solo mid Gyrocopter, but I'm not positive because that, that is something I haven't seen in a very long time. Kabu playing Chen again, and Sag Heart M on the Bane. I mean, it sounds pretty good against uh, Dragonite. I mean, if you can get him solo, the Rocker Barrage will cut right through him, but his item build does look like a safe lane build, so well. although Luo's also doesn't that much like a mid build but maybe I guess that isn't it's a different mid mid build than G went for but it is a mid build this is going to cost him a much later bottle but he does have a quelling blade I guess unless it's going to yeah, be Yeah I'm not icy. exactly sure what they're going to do I, I they may just completely ditch the off lane put IC in mid I don't I don't exactly know what they're doing but I doubt it's I doubt it's going to be completely ditched I think that life stealer or sorry the weaver will do decently in the off lane cuz they only have uh they only have one like s disable Mm -hmm. which is the net, and that only lasts like two seconds at level one. So he should be able to Shikuchi away. And it they does need show invis, though. Dust. Yeah. Well, both teams trying to secure their jungle at the moment. It's more important for Rattlesnake to do it because they need to apply a lot of pressure with the Chen early, but I don't think either team will know what either team is up to yet. But lane's pretty predictable. Uh, G is on Dragonite, most likely going mid. We see Brax, Brax, Brax usually the offlane player on Nature's Prophet, and triple lane, very similar to last game. Safe lane, Radiant side, Pycat playing as Shadow Fiend. Well, we'll see how this works out for them. Uh, Lanham's going to get all the safe farm up here. Zygam mo is most likely going to be pulling and stacking. And Brax has summoned his Treants now. Going to spread those out, hopefully pulling the creep wave past. Normally we see them summoning... Trance a bit later, so I guess he's maybe just going to use these to block camps, which is a pretty good strategy that you can do as as well. Every one minute, summon Trians, block this camp here, and block this camp here. There's a ward going to be already denied by Rattlesnake. They have two supports here, zoning uh, the Visage out, and they are not going to have Vision of Top Rune. This will help them a lot because they don't actually need a smoke to gank, uh, gank the middle lane. Yep, and there's the Trians in position. He's also using a second group to pull the creeps past, and look at that. Oh man, so smart. Holds them there just for a second to block the second camp. So yeah, he has Gyro's that timing down pad. Yeah, he really does. Like Gyro they will expire right after though. 30. 
So nicely done by Lanham to pull them together. If he wasn't paying attention, that would be very rough. And a little dewarding here. This is a Radiant Sentry, so I think that was a Dire Sentry to try to spot for an Observer Ward. I didn't catch if they caught it, though. So I'm curious to see whether or not Lanham will go for a one homing missile build, which is actually pretty good with a Bane on your team, because generally that spell won't hit unless you have a setup for it, whether it be Disruption or Bane Sleep. Those are typically the best two to set up for it, and I think they can just straight up kill Brax under the tower if he decides to leech some experience, if they have a third. Yeah, and this is actually not that bad of a lane for him either, because like you said, they need a lot of setup for a stun, so as long as he plays relatively safe, the creep wave is in a good spot right now. Until Chen comes Man, for him, basically lucky, he's going to have a good time. For him. He had a double non-golem spawn in here, and he actually managed to, to stack the small camp too, so very efficient jungling by Kabu thus far. Already level 3. Dang. Yeah, that's pretty huge. He's equivalent to a mid-hero right now, which is really, really fast. Very lucky for him. All right. Uh, G's going to take some damage here, trading with Luo. Luo, again, does have a Quelling Blade, so this should ensure that he gets a lot of last hits. But now that Dragon Knife has his bottle up, he's going to be okay on CS. Mm, he does have a Quelling Blade, though, and he has way more base damage than Dragon Knife. He has 14 more uh, right before that level hit, and he has Quelling Blade. So looking at the CS right now, it looks like he is just one ahead of the Dragon Knight at this point. But PyCat's getting free reign on bottom yet again. He's actually going for a boots first. Uh, build. I don't really think you need boots this early. Maybe he. I, I think sometimes you can just go pure greed if you're uncontested. And looks like there was a haste by Icy. What about against the Weaver though? I mean, Weaver's best way to kill Shadowfiend is Sukuchi through and maybe dive under tower. If he gets a boots, he can guarantee he's slightly more in position at all times. Mm. I feel like he just grabs the boots. Uh, the boots. Then he from there he can be as greedy as he wants to. Yeah, but he shouldn't be scared of Icy at all. Like he is level three, almost level four versus a still level one Icy. There's like if he dies, I would be very very surprised. Oh, we see a sleep on top. Is there a homie missile? There is a homie missile. This is going to be first oh, blood. Great spawn there. That's going to block a lot of the rocket barrage, but the missiles will land and a couple more damage points, and he will go down. So that's the first blood on the top lane. A one on one build out of Gyrocopter, and Sagan helps set up the yeah, kill. I think it's very smart for him to pick up that because he can use some of the force of nature to tank the rocket barrage so that he won't take that much damage, and he already has set up for a homing missile. Homing missile, generally not a very good spell, but with the setup, it can almost guarantee you a kill, even in a dual lane. So nice kill by Rattlesnake there, starting the game off quite right. Again, Weaver's running around. He's actually out of mana. He needs five seconds until he's going to be able to get away. And PyCat's not going to pursue this. Just now probably checking his mana total. One more second and he's going to be just fine. So that's going to cost him a lot, though. One last Tsukuchi, and there he burns it. He's completely out of mana now. And this guy's got to go back to base, probably, because, I mean, he can't contest this. He can sap EXP, I guess, but it's a good shot that he could die from it. Yep, and checking the levels of the supports, it looks like Rattlesnake is doing is, is ahead in levels right now, probably just because of the first blood, though, not because of more efficient jungling on either side. Both of them utilizing the pool camp, and it looks like Chen smoked. He's about to gank mid. He does have a Hellbird Smash. He's got to get this behind G. Will we see the open wounds? I he doesn't have enough mana for his stun right now. I think they could go for it right now before he hits bottle. the bottle charge. Up oh, is the bottle. bottle charge. I'm surprised they didn't go right there. I mean, there was only one creep, but he had the open wounds ready. Oh, and here they go. Now. Nope. And look, G nope. backs up. There's his vision. Now G realizes here comes an item. It's going to be a boots. He's now moving a slight amount faster. He's going to be just fine, though. G so. was at a very good position. If you notice the position, it was right here, right next to the banner. And when you're against a safe lane, triple lane, you should always stand on the bottom side of the radiant. Is he going to get this kill? Ooh. Ooh. Just do enough. He has a flash. 240. No, it it's going to be close. Oh. Here comes the TP from Brax. One hit in the Fire Breath might kill him. He's going to pop a salve, though. No sprout just yet. Oh, and he fogs it. He has a Quelling Blade. Very close. He just needed... I think he maybe should have just right-clicked and then done the Fire Breath, because if he didn't have the Rage cooldown, which I don't think he did at the time, he might have been able yeah, to kill him after reduction. 75 percent is 180, so yeah, one right-click and Fire Breath would have done it. I'm actually surprised he didn't pop a salve earlier. Yeah, so very close. It's going to cost Brax maybe a bit. Although he does get one little free range creep. See so. a DD on bottom. I see did go to heal, so he has full mana and full HP as well as a TP score right now. So I still think he can die if he gets netted. He won't be able to TP out. I think just double raise from his level five Pycat will almost kill him. They and really are doing a great job keeping his levels down. Normally or off lane like a Weaver can oh, do much better. A kill on top lane. But it looks like Brax is being a little bit out of position. I'm keeping my eyes on IC on bottom. It was probably that range creep scouting him out oh, there. Oh, is misery! So. Wow, misery taking so much damage. He, has, has a, he does have a flask. Oh, is that from the uh, the tower? Okay. From the tower as well as a swarm He's on him. He's fine. <laughs> is Brax going to come in here to secure this tower kill, though? Oh, nope, looks like he's going to go top. He's still level yeah. 4, so he's doing better in terms of experience, but not good in terms of giving up kills and not dying. Yeah, there's so much free EXP on the top lane right now. I'm sure he really doesn't want to leave that potential. But the tower's going low. 400 HP. PyCat's got to get out of here. He's going to take at least one tower hit. He's got a salve ready. And treads as well, which is going to help him... Eek some more mana out of his uh, 
mana pool. And looks like this tower will get out very shortly. Are they going to have a rotation from a side of Rattlesnake? Looks like Luo is going to go down there, but he, I don't think he's the best hero to defend against this. He can still get netted and focused down from Pycat. Does he have an early level of presence of the Dark Lord? No, he does not. Well, doesn't that work on towers now? Uh, I don't believe so. It doesn't? That sounds okay. OP. That, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they did change They did change Desolator to work on towers because apparently that was that item is not very good. Wait, uh, Sigin Desolator? It, it always did. It always did? Yeah. I, I, always. Always? Okay. Yep. Well, regardless. It did get a buff to minus 7 armor instead of minus 6, though. And so it's we cheaper. See some heroes on top lane. It looks like they're going to rotate top and prevent this push on the side of Dire. The Chen is nowhere to be found, though, so it doesn't look like they're all out committing to a push. And looks like they, w they scouted out with this ward, too, so they're completely fine. Yeah, Gene Misery did want to swing in there, but like you said, the ward was up, spots them. Um, Dragon Knight didn't have his ulti anyway, so I actually think that's pretty useful. They're like, you know what, I didn't want to go top anyways, I'd rather go mid and farm. So, go ahead, you guys can retreat, go back to your jungles. So, I like the Shadow Fiend. I think they can set up with a very nice Song or Siren into a Requiem. That's actually pretty devastating, uh, if, especially if Gyrocopter doesn't get an early BKB. Looking at his items right now, he is actually not that farmed. He only has 30 last assists, and that was yeah. after two kills on the Nature's Prophet. I think he should be probably up in the 45 to 50 range right now. He's sitting at about 32. I mean, that's probably part of the reason why they're lower, because he probably did spend a couple seconds chasing a guy down. That's a few last hits here yeah. and there. But and trying to last it under the tower with the constant pulls. The Icy does have a payload inside of him, though. Oh, he is going to go in. Pycat's in a lot of trouble. There's the open wounds. The right-clicks. Pycat's going to do some raises. Only hits one of them, actually, onto Icy. One more right-click on him, and the missiles after 1437. Can he get the kill on the Weaver? He's going to be able to do a Riptide. It might grab him, but nope. Icy runs for his life, and the Homie Missile comes in. He looks pretty dead, though. Yeah, with the call down, just to ensure the kill. Very smart move by Rattlesnake there. I did not anticipate that coming. The Life Stealer Bomb into a level 3 Weaver took down the Shadow Fiend, and perhaps PyCast should have spent some of his gold. I'm not exactly sure where his gold went. He is the top CS right now with 51 last hits, and it looks like all he has is Treads, Magic Sick, and Bottle. And so we have Brax fighting for CS on the top lane with Bane. He's going to pick up a level 6. I'm sure it would have been very useful to have that in the last fight, but unfortunately, lacking some EXP and the tower gets denied box. Bane, so. Bane is so close to level 6, too. Yeah. He can't get a solo kill here, most likely, but um, if anybody shifts to the lane, he's going to be really useful. The, yeah, they have this warp, and that's really putting a thorn onto LGD inside. They want to try and contest this top lane just because this Bane is pushing out so far, applying pressure to T1 as like a 4 or 5 support. It shouldn't happen, but unable to, unable to make anything out of it. I'd like to point out the game is currently 0-4, to four, so LGD Ant has not put a kill on the board yet, but they definitely have some combos that can work out later. Again, Nature's Prophet is a very much late-game hero, uh, especially if, after he farms up and gets annoying items like Shadow Blade. But Rattlesnake in the same feature also has some scary late-game because of all their carries. So, um, And good teamfight. Gyrocopter mm -hmm. ganking with the Bane. So I think they might have some trouble. Yeah, he's still very under farm though, but they do have this very large ancient stack that's ready for uh, ready for gyrocopter farm. Oh, wow. and their mid lane is doing it too. So I'm, I I like this play. I think that uh, gyrocopter scales much better than uh, life Seal with items, and it looks like it will be a quad stack, I believe. It's another gank now. The mid hero is in icy. This is why he keeps stacking ancients because he says, "Okay, I'll stack ancients, and we'll turn this into a kill. It'll be efficient." Yeah, Pycat's still very vulnerable to dying, and they really don't have anything to stop him if he's already on top of the shadow fiend. Uh, net is good if the distance isn't already closed, but they have the Chikuchi for him to run in. Yeah, Pycat realizes this that this time he's like, "Okay, no life steal on the board." We see the Weaver a bit forward, and he's just going to look for kills in the jungle. He's not going to find anybody here, though, as LG is currently three-man smoking towards the top lane. They want to put a kill on this Gyrocopter. Do they have enough to disable to stop the Fiend's Grip? Uh, maybe. We'll see what Dragonite <laughs> uses his stun on. Yep, he does have range form. He is level 8. Misery only level 4, though, so no Visage Familiars will be available to stop that. And Lonham is actually around half health right now. He's going for an HOD build. I feel like he should already should have had it right now. And he's in like a pretty compromising position, sitting at 464 HP. Well, they spotted Sagam as they dropped the ward. They're waiting to see him go into the wave. We're seeing a heal from Chen trying to take the mid lane. And it's going to be Sagam dying here. Here comes a three second, a four second net, sorry. It's going to snag him. He will maybe nightmare himself or just give up on life. So he dies on the top lane. They might be able to turn this into a tower kill using G, but uh, the creep wave's back a bit, but they should be okay. Mid tower, not glyphed yet. Life Sealer is still inside Icy on bottom Still? Well, still. At least they're going to kill Pycat now, finally here. Still inside him. Oh, he oh, TPs. He's going to see it coming. 
Wow, that uh, is a lot of wasted time. This guy is really patient. <laughs> he is so patient. And that, I mean, Gyrocopter already not finding that much farm. Life still are wasting a lot of his time. They're up in kills, but it doesn't feel like they're that far ahead. Yeah, especially after trading towers like that. It's very good for LGD in. Um, got Kabu sitting in the jungle for now, and a mech on him. Hannah might have now finished for the Nature's Prophet, though, so... Ten minutes, ten and a half minutes. All right, That's ten not minutes, bad, considering seconds. he died twice. Yeah, dying twice. He's got 37 CS. I think he's done a pretty good job. Most of the time we've looked at him, he's been getting Life last Stealer hits. Life is still inside ice. Really? He's so patient. All right, it this it guy, has to be off cooldown by now. He can just do like a double infest. Pop out, pop back in, pop back he's out. He's definitely AFK or something. <laughs> he fell asleep. Something like that. He has power threads. They're definitely setting up for kills bottom. Rattlesnakes, Lan M, as well as Kabu have shifted into the jungle. Uh, we've also got Sag M rotating over. They're going to push the wave out, and they're going to dive people under tower. The, I, the question is, is LGD going to even bother defending this? Maybe I think they're, they're going to wait for the same thing as last game, which is the early BKB on Shadow Fiend. Actually, he's going for a Shadow Blade, not huh. a BKB. I think that's... I mean, Life Sealer can just crush him. With, with, with a dust. With a dust, right. And I mean, I guess they have they have song, no song set. I mean, they they don't have anything that can stop. Them. Maybe like a really pro sprout around the shadow fiend. Life stealer still. Oh my gosh, is he gonna do something? He comes out. He's been waiting so long, and it's gonna do absolutely nothing. His infest is up again. That's how long he's been in there. Pie cat also gonna teleport out, and Luo says, "What am I doing with my life?" <laughs> Poor guy. Well, I bet. Um, I mean, icy felt safe with him around at least. He got. He's almost level six now. It's true. That's some sort of comfort. It's like having a free Dyer's item, you know? Tower. You have a life stealer <laughs> item. It's like a Necro <laughs> 3, basically. Just waiting to it's use like it. It's like an Aegis, kind of. Exactly. You're, you're really long cooldown. Woof. Well, that was a lot of wasted time. Gyrocopter is able to farm the enemy jungle now, and that is really why you don't want to give up that bottom T1. This tower is more important than any of the other T1s. The top T1 is just like whatever. You can afford to have that down, and Rattlesnake is doing a very good job of prioritizing the right areas to take over because Shadow Fiend had a very good start, but if he actually just has a Shadow Blade in team fight, the snakes will just crush him if they have detection, which they probably should. Four, five, and fives. I see something happening in mid. Oh, it's okay. He's got a haste yep. and He's invincible. No problem. So, again, not very many disables on Rattlesnake. It's basically Fiend's grip or Chen stuns, and that's about it. So, definitely pretty easy for him. And they are stacking Shadow Blades as well. No fast BKB for Dragonite. So, it's going to be another invis stack taking a uh, page out of Rattlesnake's book. And G just narrowly dodges a centaur stun. Top tower is under and only 5 kills in 13 minutes, but Shadow Fiend, one of the better late game heroes, one of the faster farmers. I Ooh. feel like it's still about even given the strength of LG in its lineup and considering how uh, how ahead Rattlesnake is right now. It's not that they're not that much ahead right now, but the momentum is definitely in their favor. They're going to spot out the Lifestealer sitting in the Radiant Jungle, though. Mm. Might be swinging over to take him. Uh, Misery, I don't think. Can oh, there's one Shadow Blade up. I think they might be got in danger it. now. Oh, Shadow Fiend does. Now, now that they have the Shadow Blades, the tides may turn very soon. We've got Gyrocopter cleaning up the Ancient Stack. He actually does have a Helm of the Dominator, a little surprisingly. Uh, what do you think he's going to use this for? I mean, they had a Life Stealer stack in for him. Yeah, game, they have I a mean. Chen too. So I. I don't think it's the best build to accelerate your farm. If you're going to play passively like they've been doing and try and wait until maybe the 25 to 30 minute mark to farm, you want to go something that will just help you farm faster. HOD is decent, but if you have someone stacking, I think someone like a straight up Yasha or FaZe or Shadow Blade and Lan M is going to die. Guys, I think we just saw oh, Shadow Oh, he missed a raise! He missed a raise, oh, PyCat! Is he going to oh. get one more raise up? Oh, oh, one more right click! Oh, oh my goodness. Shadow Fiend missed a, the last raise on the Gyrocopter, unable to secure a kill. It actually looked like Lon M was AFK for a second. He was just like right clicking a Shadow Fiend who was just absolutely destroying him in a in a heads up matchup. But just slightly with this is no Lon M Shadow Fiend. I'd also like to point out that a Shadow Amulet saved somebody's life just now. Have you uh, ever seen that happen what in the history of Dota? It was a life stealer open wounds, and Dragon I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go invisible in <laughs> two point six they seconds. Need two point four, sorry. Oh, I see has a dust of appearance inside of him right now. I'm still flabbergasted that he saved his life with a shadow. I, I, I don't even know how to yeah. cast anymore. <laughs> Icy's gonna do some right click. He actually has a dust here. G's gonna go. Oh my gosh, wrong time to fight. G was ready for that one. Yep. And LG Dent has doubled their kills. With a recent pick of the Shadow Blade and no like big items coming in the way of Rattlesnake, I think that they run away with this like 15 to 22 minute about. And then once Gyrocopter gets his BKB pretty soon, once uh, Life Stealer gets another item, hopefully he doesn't sit inside a <laughs> Weaver for another five minutes, then they can turn things around again.
But they're just abusing the crap out of this ancient stack. Yeah, no kidding. I don't think Gyro's left this for the last four minutes. Yeah, he loves it. Brax also going chat. Of course. I mean, all right, let's. How many do we have? Is that three? All right, three Shadow Blades on the Radiant team. They are totally going to do some annoying split push this game. And if they can keep the gold advantage that I'm sure they have right now, not true. Okay, but I feel like they're ahead decently. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I feel like they're decently ahead too, mainly because they've been able to dodge the Infest Bombs. We saw how yeah. effective Nakes Bombs were last game, but Weaver is not your desired payload or desired hero to deliver that payload. You ideally want someone with a Disable first off so they don't TP like we saw, like three or four heroes TP away from. And it's just... It's just a little underwhelming. They should be they th with any other hero besides Weaver, like a Storm or a Queen of Pain, even uh, Puck. I think like they they would be ahead on kills, like way ahead on kills, maybe like eight to three by now. But unable to capitalize on that, they're wasting a lot of time on Luo, their solo mid, and he is quite under farm. G was considering ganking top there with Pycat, but um, they opted against it. There was actually a Sentry on Life Stealer. Maybe that's why they're scared. This okay, this is a Life Stealer. He's hard to kill. He could have Infest. He'll have detection of us if he does decide to go aggressive. Decide to go aggressive, so that would be a bad time. So they decide against him. They're going to TP out and go back to farming. Actually, geez, look at them. He's going to go check out the ancients, I guess. Mm, they have a sentry ward there, so he has to be a little bit scared. But there are no other heroes besides there, uh, in there besides icy. He's also got a haste, so him dying right now is very low chance. Again, not very many disables on the dire team. Yeah. I really feel like we need to see a, a fiend's grip, though. I mean, we're 17 minutes. He in the hit game. level six pretty early. He too. hit it fast, and he has not casted a single fiend's grip yet that I've seen. Yeah, Rattlesnake just doesn't seem to be very put together in this 10 to 25 minute phase of the game. They have aggressors, but like, why is the Bane not ganking with the Life Stealer? Why is the Life Stealer not jumping inside of the Bane and he, he him not running around? Bane's not the best farmer by any means, and he's yeah. not the best pusher either. He's he excels at ganking, and he just hasn't been. Chen is in big trouble. Forcing a TP on the bot lane. Nope. That's going to be Forcing Bane. Some rotation. There's so. the Bane, but he's not there. At, he's he's there late, or he's just not there at all. The ancient party continues, guys. But Brax <laughs> using Treants from the low ground. A really nice thing you can do actually is go from the low ground here, and then you can summon Treants from the low ground and then block it. He's oh, putting a sentry, sentry down, but it was actually a Treant, I'm sure, that blocked that camp. Yeah, and they know what Rattlesnake is up to. And checking out the farm right now, it looks like Rattlesnake is pulling out a little bit in terms of farm, even though LGDN is one tower up. I mean, it's basically... Mostly Gyro. Somehow, Lifestealer is still above DK despite spending about three minutes inside <laughs> the Weaver, but... Yeah, mo mostly just that big, big ancient stack. They've been very vigilant about it. Chen is doing it. We saw Lifestealer doing it. We usually don't see this much attention paid to it. And on top of that, he has HRD. He finally hits his BKB up so they can force a 5 on 5 if they want to. But I think that both teams think that, okay, we could take this late game. I mean, Shadow Fiend and... Uh, DK are both decent, and they have Naga starting to back them up with a minus armor, with a net to keep BKB the heroes in place. So LGD, I can see why they think they have the stronger uh, five man. But Rattlesnake, I can see that too. They have the Life Sealer who isn't as farmed as he could be because he spent a lot of time in there, and they have the Gyrocopter who is just farming fantastically well after their early game phase. Luo might be in trouble top lane though. His rage is about to run out. Here comes the illusions. They're going to spin. There's the stun on Luo. All the minus armor. Look at that. Brax even said, "No, no, you guys got it. I'm, I'm going." And he immediately smoked after, but G really wanted that creep. And he has a casual clarity 19 minutes in, but that's an acceptable trade, I think. Especially with the, considering the way the game's been going, just or w way the game has been going. Life Stealer death for an Aegis. Not bad. And a really fast Aegis kill, or Roshan kill, that is. Uh, mm. Medallion on the Chen. They also had some creeps. They had an Elf Wolf as well to give some bonus damage. And even some Life Steal, and I'm sure Rocket Barrage coming out of the Gyrocopter. So. At least they got that out of their Lifestealer's death. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that'll affect the total net worth. Yep, Lifestealer has finally dropped below the Dragonite in terms of net worth. The only person sitting up there is the Jaro, but that's because they've all been so proactive to try to keep him farmed. Mm -hmm. But he's still a moderate amount away from a major damage item, so it's going to be a while until Lanham single-handedly wins team fights. Yeah, that, I mean, that was actually a really big Aegis for Rattlesnake, considering how good uh, LG didn't can take Roshan. They have the Naga Sleep. They have the Fury on Treants, the tank. They have the minus armor with a shadow feed. If you gave me a lineup and be like, okay, which one's going to take Roshan now faster, I would definitely say LGDN. But Rattlesnake going with that first pick Dire, I can see why they use it if they can pick off Roshan just for free like that. And Pike had quite close to uh, starting up his Manta style. Uh, do you think that's the right choice against the Gyro? Um, he did grab it last game. 
But with the way the game has been going, I think it's the right choice because they haven't been 5 on 5 at all. It is not a good item in 5 on 5 because your Manta images will just get owned by the Flat Cannon. But if you're going to be split pushing, if you're just going to be trying to dodge ganks with yeah. the Weaver and the Life Sealer and perhaps even the Bane Elemental, even though he hasn't been participating that many, Manta is a great item for that. And it's good for farming faster. Oh, I see a mid. Oh, he's going in. Pycat uses an oh, ulti. Doesn't grab him. This is his another raise. I mean, he was invisible. Mm -hmm. It would have just been styling at that point. So, yeah, a little bit unfortunate. So Pycat missing out on two kills. He could potentially uh, be three and one. I oh, see. Ooh. Oh, they're just asleep. Oh, they got a courier too. Did they really? Apparently. Huh. There was a companion thing for that too. I think I took the odor. I seen. I mean, that's. I've seen a lot of yeah. courier kills today. Couriers has been dying left and right. Yeah. Thank God they don't have uh, that shield anymore. Oh yeah, that thing never was, that, that was so annoying. That was probably one of the coolest remakes I think. Everybody was so scared when he when he when it got changed. I was like, oh my god, my courier's gonna die all the time now. But I mean, you actually have to micro the courier. Dota yeah. players are notoriously bad for micro microing multiple units, and it is showcasing in this game. Yeah. So they're gonna defend the push mid as Rattlesnake pushes forward. They've got BKBs ready. On Jari's got 3k gold as well. No demon edge just yet. And they're gonna trade. They've got G as well as Pycat taking the tier two. So. They are slowly working this on this This definitely favors one. LGDN, though, because they have Nature's Prophet. Like, you, yeah. if you try and split push versus Nature's Prophet, you're going you're gonna to lose. Uh, especially with considering Brax's farm right now. He has Midas Shadow Blade. After starting off 0 and 2, he's recovered quite nicely, finding farm, and their T3 is already under siege. They already took 200 damage, so even though they traded T2s, LGDN coming up pretty far ahead, and it's only going to get worse. Wow, check out this item on the Life Stealer Shadow Blade Gem. Wow. Well, so this is going to be for killing all of these invis heroes. Essentially, he get into melee range. Yeah, I think that they can just like five mana, just like straight up, just kill him though. Yeah. If, if he uh, if he yeah. rages, they just sleep and kill him. And if he doesn't rage, then he just dies of magic damage. And they have they have a BKB up on the Shadow Fiend too. I thought he was going for Manta Saddle, like you said, but looks like a BKB. So they are ready for the five on man in case it goes to that. But I don't think that LGD should force a uh, force the issue right now. They have four heroes on top. They have Fury on the bottom lane. But the Aegis is still about two and a half minutes from expiring. So I I, I think they can just keep playing it safe like they have been. There's no reason to pick a fight now as opposed to five or six minutes earlier when the Roshan wasn't up or uh, two minutes later when... Uh, the ages will expire. This is not the opportune time to do it. Hmm. Well, they are still pressuring the top lane. Uh, Pycat was spotted up at the Observer Ward as he went Shadow Blade, so the Weaver booked it. So no quite no easy kill on him, at least. The rest of the team is sitting a bit back. They don't actually have Song of the Siren for about 50 seconds, so it's a bit scary for them to engage. And mm -hmm. Rattlesnake's going to all shift over. They're anticipating a fight, and Jarcopter's item choice is going to be an Eagle Song, so he's aiming for the Butterfly. It's a good choice because he'll be a lot more survivable, survivable against Shadow Fiend damage, against Dragonite damage, against Prophet right clicks, until they get a sheep. Once they grab a sheep, that can remove evasion for the hex duration, and then he's going to have a lot mm. more At least it gives him armor, trouble. too. Armor is really important versus LGD's lineup. Looks like 1437's in a lot of trouble. We'll get grip, but I think it's perfectly okay to use grip, considering there's only been five kills on their side in 23 yeah. minutes. Definitely a bit of a mistake, but he was just placed in Observer Ward that got blocked because mm. of the gem pickup, but... Yeah. Small loss. There, there was no point in pushing right there. They had, they didn't have Song of Siren up. They were fighting against the Aegis, and it's not like Rattlestick was trying to accomplish something else. Like, maybe you would split push there if they were applying pressure to your bottom T2, but it was just a lot of wasted time. I'm surprised they made that uh, tactical error, but Nature's Prophet is, like, pretty close to Sheep, too. I think that's a very good time to fight. He should yeah. probably get it, like, a little before uh, Roshan spawns and after the Aegis expires, so I think that's a really good time for LGDN to take a fight. And they also have a bit of a timing window here before Gyro picks up his Butterfly. He doesn't quite have enough, needs 900 gold to finish that up, so I guess they're still not going to go. Uh, when does the Aegis run out? Pretty soon, I'm sure. Yeah, he's got about one minute left until he is out of time, so mm -hmm. they're just going to back off. They're going to fight normally without Aegis. So the gold graph looks almost completely even. It is just actually like touching the zero line. Um, wow. But I, I still think the... Fa the the uh, game goes to LGDN. Just cons yeah. I think the advantage rather goes to LGDN. I feel like they've been in the lead this entire game personally. I mean, mm -hmm. all of their lanes went really well. They have Fury on. They have a better split push and late game lineup. Yep. They have a sleep to try and counteract pushes. Like if you if you go for a uh, push and you try and trade towers and you get a Naga sleep on them as are TPing, that's like a GG racks right there. Yeah, that's definitely true. And, and they, they have sheep too. Sheep and sheep. they have yeah more hard disables, especially like Dragonite stun. We saw it win games uh, versus uh, that was Fnatic versus Navi. Uh, is that correct? Navi kept getting stunned. Yeah, on the gyrocopter, I believe the gyro kept getting stunned oh, right. before BKB. Things like that. 
just having a hard stun makes a huge difference. It's obviously their only one other than Sheepstick, but makes a big impact. Can swing team fights. And Chen, um, Chen is going to level off too. He's not going to be very useful into the mid late game. Whereas I think that Visage, uh, generally they get an Agadim Scepter probably around like 35, 40 minute mark. Perhaps if they're going for it, Misery is way under farm at this point. But I think he scales a little bit better than Chen, although the send back is very, very useful. And Kabu's doing a lot of effort trying to stop the jungling, actually. He's sending the Seder Tormentor right past to stop the uh, Ancient Spawn, and he will make it just in time, actually. Kind of an interesting build on him as well. He's got two levels of Penitence now, not going to finish maxing out Test of Faith. So they want some other way to try to reduce survivability levels on heroes like Shadowfiend or Dragon Knight. So Aegis has expired. Looks like Roshan will respawn in a little over th uh, three minutes' time. And let's check Nature's Profit item status. He has 2,600 gold, so just around 900 gold away from that Scythe of Vice. Very close and dangerous moment. And every item past that gets even more scary. He can, at some point, maybe even out-carry the game more than even Shadowfiend does. Shadowfiend's got 2,800 gold. Manta may be next. Will he go Butterfly? I think Butterfly wouldn't be that bad, actually. Yeah, but Butterfly wouldn't wouldn't be that bad. I think he needs Life Steal in case he wants to man mode the Gyrocopter. He also uh -huh. needs MKB if he wants to do a lot of damage and just yeah, poor that's Wild a good point. Kid. Maybe poor he does need Ripper. to go straight MKB. Yeah, uh, it d it depends on whether he thinks he's gonna be focused a lot. If you're getting focused, then it's a great idea. But I don't think this Life Steal came man mode on him because he had went Shadow Blade, so he doesn't have any armor, any plus armor, and he doesn't point. have that much HP. So I think it really he can just kind of play around the Life Stealer because if yeah, if, if Life Stealer man modes on him, you can just BKB and just right right click him down. Yeah, he'll process. die really fast actually because mm -hmm. Presence of the Dark Lord is now maxed out. Essentially, this is a zero armor hero at the 27 right, minute mark. That is really scary. Fights. If he gets sheep too, it's that there's like he'll team die. fight over. <laughs> yeah, he'll definitely die. They want him, want to keep him around, hopefully, for bashing. I, I just don't really like playing him as a ganking hero. Is essentially what they're doing right now. Yeah, they could have picked a different hero. Again, like, yeah. last game, they picked Queen of Pain in, like, a solo safe lane farming role. And this game, they used Nyx as, like, the main ganker. I don't think they're playing to the hero strengths. If you want to go ganker, yeah. go someone like Puck or Storm Spirit. They are very, very good. I thought it was great for the early game, but at this point, like, mm -hmm. what's he going to do? Break and Viz on Dragonite and open wounds and, like, pray for bashes? Like, these guys are going to get BKBs and things like that. Uh, at that point, you're just praying for bashes. You need something really reliable so that when you make your team fight, it can be effective. I mean, he will have Abyssal Blade in about Yeah, even, even if you get a bash, I don't think he'll make that bigger as everything. I think he's just going to be focused down so easily with either to sleep or the, or the net. I don't think he's going to be very useful. Checking Brax's item, he does have a Scythe of Vice now. So this is probably LGD, and it's time to strike. Icy does have Payload inside of him, and if they take a Convincing Fire right now, they can take Roshan and pretty much just win the game from there. The Gold Graph is still pretty close, only 1,000 favor Rattlesnake, but I think that LGD can just run away with this uh, with one good fight. And there's a smoke. They're ready to fight. Oh, they're running forward. Pycat's going to go invis, going to scout things out. There's Treants all over the place looking for heroes. Got Icy sitting quite back, and is he going to be the guy that gets jumped on? They spotted him out, but not a very good they choice. They needed sheep first on him. I don't know where Brax yeah. was, but he was not in position to sheep, uh, sheep him. Yeah, he's sitting by the small camp right now. I think he's a bit scared of that. Oh, G here. with the haste? Uh, nope. Pops haste. Runs away. Yep, they know they had vision of him, whether they're peeing on a center or a ward up here. But, in fact, it is a gem inside of Icy, or inside of him, life stealer on him. Well, they TP out. Looks like they're going to retreat. Look f to fight another day. But if Rattlesnake decides to contest Roshan, they can take it. They need the Visage Familiar to scout. They need uh, the Force of Nature to scout. They just need Observer Rewards there, even though they have a gem. They need Vision of the Roshan. They can't give one another free one up. I think LGD Int just doesn't want to take any fight that could possibly cost him. Oh, no. Life Stealer didn't come close. out. He could have maybe came out and tried Yeah, I think he thought that it was a three-second TP, and he didn't want to waste it on that. But how... How long has Life Stealer spent inside Weaver this game? It has to be a phenomenal amount of time. Nine man Dota, man. It's, uh, <laughs> Strong. It's a fun custom game. Strong Dota. Usually you play in pubs, people leave, but this one's a bit different. So. And Weaver looks like he is going for a Lincoln Sphere, I suppose. That is going to be a super late Lincoln Sphere. They went Urn of Shadows, but how are you gonna how are you gonna get Urn charges when you have five kills in 30 minutes? Uh, that's a really good point. Earn definitely not an efficient item to have this game. Mm. It just it, it doesn't seem like they're playing to the strength of the hero. Weaver's like a good farmer. He's like a good fighter early, but they didn't build a lineup around him. They're not actually getting any kills. Life Stealer, a great late game, but he's going for like a more ganking build. I'm I'm questioning these builds. Well, they're trying to pick up all of the neutrals if possible. Net in response, and we'll see the Dark Troll drop. 
I love how they're keeping the birds in the Roshan pit. It's like the best way to scout it out. It's very difficult to kill them. If you think they're going to die, you can just stone, for, stone, for, stone form them on the high ground. And they really don't want to let this slip away. But there's a BKB now in G. They're ready to team fight. I don't know if Rattlesnake's in the best position. We have uh, Icy and again. Are they going to kill on top away. lane, though? They, have, they, they don't have any detection on Brax, so he is vulnerable, but he needs a sheep. They have a dust in case he's ready, but Icy's going to TP. Looks like they may force the issue on bottom. Yeah, they end up backing out. They must have a gem on somebody here. Yeah, they have a one on the Naga Saturn. Very okay. useful, especially considering she has uh, her illusions uh, that can get it too. They don't, haven't placed Observer Rewards yet, or have they? Oh, might see initiation here. There's the bugs coming through. BKB from G, and the right clicks. He's going to get Fiend's Grip, though. He's in a lot of trouble. Most likely going to die. Song of the Siren is being used in LGD. Also taking more damage. Not the best fight. I think they have to get out of here. That was just a late sleep. If he has slept earlier, Dra Dragonet was BKB, so after the interruption of the, of the Fiend's Grip, he can just run away. But a little bit too late, and sh that's just a terrible place for them to fight, too. This, yeah. is, this is the stairwell of death, and they're going to give up a Roshan, even though they have the better Roshan lineup. Yeah, two heroes up on the high ground here, and then the rest of the team over here. Not mm -hmm. good positioning. They weren't anticipating Rattlesnake coming at that moment, so... yeah. You need Naga there just in case they are up there. You have to be ready for that. And if you get a five-man sleep, you can just walk into them and then BKB in their face on, on the weak heroes, especially like Chen or uh, Bane or I guess Gyrocopter is not that weak at this point. But if you can if you can pick off the support, you should probably win the fight. But Lana is being very – he's very, very scary. 2,100 HP, almost as a Satanic completed. He recently got the Aegis. Things are looking pretty bad for LGDN. All they needed was one good fight, but – Rattlesnake choosing a very, very opportune, good positioning fight near the Roshan pit. Yep, so the gold graph finally is going to swing into somebody's favorite. It's going to be Rattlesnakes. And Gyrocopter, with three survivability items, actually looks really impossible to kill at this point. I mean, there are some stuns from LGD inside, but another gank on the top lane, that's going to be on top of Shadow Fiend here. Now so, uh, they're just getting... That wasn't even a Fiend's Grip. That yeah. was just a Brain Sap, and somebody went back, I think. I don't know exactly what LG is doing right now rattlesnake i, I think lg didn't have a really good timing window but in between the second and or be between the ages expiring and the next roshan and they couldn't capitalize it i think rattlesnake was in a pretty fantastic position oh it looks like kabu's gonna get picked off on bottom but he had the sheep he has it i don't i haven't seen him use it yet uh yeah he really didn't need it there i think he was mm. gonna be fine i mean <laughs> they, he's had it for a few minutes though and they they don't use their items when they get them that's like the really good time to fight as soon as you get their sight device they won't expect it they don't have any bkbs up on the weaver or uh the life if you get a sheep up they're almost instantly dead you can tra translate that into a buyback or an aegis a deny it from rattlesnake and you can try and just keep farming from there if you want to play that game I uh, like what LG1437 uh, is doing here. He's just stacking the creeps up. I don't know if he's going to actually kill all of these. I think he's trying to save them for the Shadow Fiend in five seconds so he can get more souls. It's most likely what he'll be doing here. But Shadow Fiend still hasn't spent his gold. He's had just BKB for quite a while here. Hasn't even popped the BKB yet. And what did he buy? He just bought something probably a Yasha? Oh no, yeah. he is going to MKB. So MKB on Shadow Fiend is going to be the choice. I think it's too glass cannon. He can just get focused down even through BKB because Life Sword does have that basher. And it all depends on positioning because even yeah, if he does rage, the terrible. Naga can net him. Mm -hmm. But he, he, like the times that Shadow Fiend has died with the Life Sword on top of him, he's, he's been like right on top of yeah. him. There's been no time for the Naga to react. Ooh, he actually needs 100 gold till he can finish his MKB, so brings himself one Javelin. The Tier 2 is going to drop in some drawing on the map for LGDN. They want to go mid. They want to trade towers again because they're not ready to fight just yet. Is that TP from Brax to the bot lane as well, trying to continue split pushing. He's going to be 17 seconds away. They're only four strong, though. Hmm. Bane is on the mid lane. They do have the Aegis, so I guess you could kind of say they're five strong, but it's still a very compromising position for them. You don't want to give away your age advantage because you took a bad fight with a uh, bad fight four and five. Yeah, and an interesting invest choice, but he goes for the gyrocopter, not the weaver. Hmm. Wait, did I just see that right? Icy has a sheep stick. I was like, what? Wow. So I thought not he was going gonna for be a Lincoln's, Lincoln's. but they, he's tired of people TPing away from him. Interesting. I've seen it before. It's decent if you lack on disable, but they also need damage. I guess that's where Gyrocopter comes in. Triple, I, yeah, triple and, strategy. and Life Stealer. They're fine, honestly. Like, I think a Lincoln's at this point would have been really worthless. Like, what are you going to do with the Lincoln's? Yeah, was, like, really dodge late. one spell and do plus 25 damage? Big deal. Like, I think the Sheep is a good choice. It's better than a really late Lincoln's, at least. And, and they're not going to see it coming. Be completed. So, and they're lacking disable. 
Well, here comes the push, and the right side is not pushed out, and generally this is Furion's time to shine and be like, okay, well, if you guys want to push, we'll get some damage on the T3, but that is not the case. They are going to be up in the base in just a matter of seconds, and Brax will not be able to split push fast enough. So 10% of his time spent inside other heroes. He's going to go high ground. He might go out of position on purpose that they jump on him, but uh, it's going to lose some HP. Still has Satanic up. Why is Brax so scared? He, he is, like, s terrified. I think he's, they're really scared of the, the Lifestealer because they don't see the Lifestealer right now. But would Lon M be all the way up there with a Lifestealer? On, that, I, that, I don't know. That is very Look at that big ulti. He has buyback too. So in the off chance that the, the very, very small chance that he is up there, then uh, then you can just buy back. But he isn't. So MKB is up on Shadow Fiend. He's going to use one raise. Missiles dropped on the ground. There's the Glyph as well. Another nuke on Lan M. Highcat almost getting stunned. And still no fight. They have to push back, though. I mean, the, the glyph has been used, but Brax continues to counter push. He's still worried about getting killed, though. I'm so surprised. He's seen four heroes by now. He's extremely, extremely scared. But if he dies, the push ends, right? Like, if he dies, right, they, he does have buyback. But yeah, and their push ends. Well, the push could go. The rattlesnake could go in. Yeah. Well, not if not if he dies. They have to commit a couple heroes over there. They can't. They can't fight four on five with a buyback. Well. I mean, that tower is very, very low. Looks like both of them, they're just going to trade T3s at this point. But Lonem does a ton of damage right now. There is no glyph. That T3 tower will fall. Everybody taking a lot of damage. Misery might back off. Yep, could have sold some. It's not a word. Doesn't matter. They're going to smoke, actually. They're running for their lives. They had one TP back and immediately Brax is going to book it. It's like, I don't want to well, die, that's guys. That's a very smart smoke. Ooh. And now that Icy has rejoined them, I think they can fight. They can turn this around if they want to take this. In. This is such a bad place. They're up the hill. Big ulti on G. Oh, great ulti from the Naga. It's going to keep him alive here. He's able to pop some heals. Missile comes through, and now they're on Luo. Sleep is going to end, though. He's going to infest into something. He's been waiting so long. It finally comes out. Another nuke on top of the Chen, and they're chasing Pycats running for his life. Misery is going to go down here with a couple right clicks, and Brax is going to TP right out. Hex. Oh, oh the, hex the Hex came in time. Brax is going to go down. I think Dust comes through. More right clicks. Drops his ulti. And will he TP? Nope. Great nightmare. And a call down. Brax will drop two dead heroes. Did anybody from Rattlesnake die there? I don't believe so. That was Not just one. a bad... You don't want to go up this hill. You, you, uh, fighting uphill is one of the worst positional disadvantages that you can Dyer's engage in in Dota. And G just walked up the hill. They don't have vision of the Naga. Or of the of the bane, so they can't sheep him. They can't uh, disable him with the dragon knight because he's already fiend script, and they're forced to blow a sleep on it. And Nake's rage was almost over, so they couldn't focus him down during that. And you just don't want to fight uphill like that. Shadow fiend tried to get a couple of right clicks off, but forced a retreat too. So they gave up two kills for nothing. There's oh, oh my I god, <laughs> blown up. <laughs> It Double looks like he's blade. critting, guys, but that's just regular damage. 355 a hit there. Well, that's one problem with the sheet build. You have no armor yeah. and no HP. If or he, not it, that much. If he had a Lincoln's so. there, it would stop the Dragon Knight stun. And they, I don't think um, they would have a way to break that. So. But they did kill Ophirion because he had the sheep. That's true. It's hard to say. So, yeah, I think what Brax is trying to do in the last team fight, TP into the tree clump, be able to hex the uh, Bane from the opposite side, but he got really messed up dealing with the other heroes. So it was a very disjointed team fight, unfortunately, for them. So they keep trying to take fights, but it's just not working out. Now there's an MKB on Jaro. I say get rape your necks, guaranteed. I don't know. Like, he's got a Satanic. He's got a Butterfly. Yeah, he's, so he's got Magic oh, Luo Immunity. On bottom. He's going to get sent back, actually. And they're going to take Kabu instead. So there's the Sprout on him. That's going to cost the BKB down to seven seconds, as well as an ulti. But good pickup. They get a kill. It helps. And they're pretty far behind right now, 6,000 gold. And I think it all just started with those the one Roshan and then the fight at, at the Roshan too. So, like, both these Roshans are gone in favor of Rattlesnake. I think if they get a third one, and Gyrocopter is just going to be impossible to kill. And he can get a Rapier. Rapier, Aegis or not, I think they can still win it using that method. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen Gyrocopter getting even close to dying yet this game. Yeah, at he went a very a safe time. build. Yeah, really tanky. If he grabs the, the Rapier on top of this, he already hits for over 300 damage. He can be hitting for 600 insanely fast and life stealing like 1,000 HP per right click if he uses a Satanic, which is going to guarantee it hit everybody. So, I mean, I don't even know if it's worth it to grab a Butterfly and Shadow Fiend at this point. But look at the damage come through. These are support here. It's just taking this much. Small slow there. Life Stealer picks off Nature's Prophet. That's on the bot lane. Wow. Exactly what Brax was afraid of. He has his buyback. Are they going to catch another one? That is the question. 1437 trying to run. There is a homie missile on him. That's on PyCat, actually. There's the blink forward sag. Oh, he gets fogged. And there's the ulti. Almost casted, but 1437 says, okay, I am not going to deal with this. 
They're still chasing though. There is no T2. Icy hot on the trails. Five seconds up until his sheep. Misery will TP from the high ground. And there is a blink grip from Sagam. Great uh, illusions coming out. 14 through 7 might be able to avoid this. There's the entangle. Gets caught. Does and go loses down. the gem too. Naga's Naga can buy, buy back, but what does she actually do with no sleep, with no ear mirror images, with no items? And Lua says, guys, just hit the racks. Like, come on. And Everybody's a dead. Nation's property. I'm actually surprised he bought out so late. The Rex was already down by the time he bought back. Yeah, Dragonite ulti's up in two seconds, so they could fight. Here's the first net on Lan, Lan M. Not going to fight it just yet. They're all waiting. I mean, they have gems, so they won't be able to initiate. All right, they're going in. BKB is popped. Stun goes on Kabu. Kabu's going to be trying to burst on. Look at the bash hits on G. He's taking so much damage. Medallion as well. He's running for his life. And now Lan M trying to do some AoE. Two dead heroes. Everybody is low in LGD. And here's the call down. Great nightmare on Pycat. He even get his BKB off here. His ulti comes out. Technically two. And that is a lot of dead heroes on LGD. And it looks like Rattlesnake, despite looking behind most of the game, was able to actually win their fights when it mattered. Yeah, it was really, I mean, the ancient sagging by Rattlesnake really put them so far ahead. So it's not over yet by any means, but Lanham under tower now. Pike had us to pop his BKB to survive. Brax taking such big no damage. No buyback on him either. Oh, man. Surely that is going to be just about it. They can definitely take Rax so fast. Your misery running for his life, but he is looking to drop. Rattlesnake has... That's most of the heroes. Another stun on Kabu at least, but a Hex. There it is. Icy saving the day. Right clicks on G. G is going to go down. Pycat fighting for his life. And that's got to be it. Yeah, More buy Hex. Right. Never mind. Not well, done yet. Shadow Fiend died. Already bought back. Died again. Nature's Prophet died. Bought back. Died again. So it's only two heroes up. Naga Sider and Usur buy back as well. As, and the Dragon Knight. So if these heroes die again, they stay dead. But it looks like there is still the T2 up on bottom. So they're trying. I think they were trying to take down that Rax. But they might just throw it in right now. Still 30 seconds left on the Furion. 50 seconds left on the Shadow Fiend. There's a Glyph. And those are the two most farmed heroes on their entire Lanham team. has 5,800 so. gold right now. So even if they lose this fight by some miracle or twist of fate, then... Ooh. Almost ulti from 1437. They does get hexed. And I wow. think that's just about it. That I don't. Yeah, there should be GG coming out anytime, or they can just let the throne die. It doesn't really matter at this point. So Rattlesnake is going to be able to take a one-one most likely. Uh, he's going to go hex initiate, trying to at least land M taking damage. The right click comes in, call down as well, slows G, pops his ulti, but I don't know if he's going to make it. The right click is so insane. There's the sprout, might give them land M if they can kill him right here. That'd be huge. They might be able to defend this actually. No, the throne. It's going to go down, and LGD Int ends up. Getting dropped the second game, wow. it's going to be a 1-1. They just could not force a team fight I in the early game. I, I think they could have done it, though, with the Shadow Blade and the Sheep on Nature's Prophet. That's a great way to pick off heroes. And they didn't get any picks. They didn't get any Roshans either, and that really cost them. Yeah, getting the Roshans stole from them when they took towers. Definitely put them behind, and I, they just never could find a team fight. Despite having the Naga Siren, they didn't want to force anything. And Rattlesnake never really got picked off, where, on the contrary, there was a lot more ganking possibilities out of Rattlesnake. And so many of them failed, but when they finally did work, it gave them a very slight foothold. Mm. So That one fight at the Roshan pit, I really say that must that, that changed the game. That gave them the Roshan, and they killed the Dragon Knight, and they blew the Song of the Siren, too. So that was really the turning point uh, for the game for me. But they Rattlesnake was just so good about fight, uh, like fighting at good places. They didn't want to yep. fight at the top T2 as soon as that Sheep hit, but they chose to fight at the Roshan, even though they knew they had a Sheep, just because of that great, great positioning. Dragon Knight was up the hill. They had to come up that choke if they wanted to, and that's just an awful, awful place to fight. Yeah, you never want to fight there. So let's throw it over to the desk, guys. What do you have to think about the game? I think they needed more Shadow Blades. They only had three. It's not enough. Where's your Visage Shadow Blade? You need five. Yeah. It's you pop out with a hit from Visage and then it's no assumption. No bueno. So Shadow Blade is an item that when you get it, it helps you split push. It helps you get the backstab ganks. Yeah. It doesn't help you in team fight. Like, one sentry just shuts down your Shadow Blade. I, I think for DK, it actually does, because you get in range to stun. Okay. But for a hero like Prophet... Or Shadow Fiend? Not so much. Right. You're not going to get that initiate off in a team fight. So, by having by taking a Roshan fight, when they don't really have... I mean, they had a lead. That's her. They have Naga yeah. Siren to disengage. But when Roshan's 100 HP, and you song, you can't run from that. You got to just... Yeah, you got to fight. So, they couldn't find a pickoff. Which is just shows you that Rattlesnake is simply a little bit better in terms of... Like, this is... If I have to rate which team is more Chinese, <laughs> RS clearly have... Is that really a discussion? No, like, it, in a game like this where there's one team has three Shadow Blades and they cannot find a pickoff, then the other team is just dodging well, right? 
they're dodging well. I, I mean, I also just felt like uh, this is this sort of the same old story with LGDN. I mean, a past TI thirty minutes can't win a game, uh, or really struggle. I mean, I wouldn't say can't do it, but low percentage to win those late game scenarios. Okay. They didn't have the best team fight lineup, but their pick. I mean, they triple Shadow Blade, Sight the Vice, Dragon Knight. You should end the song. You should be able to find picks, but they couldn't. So, I mean, good movement by Rattlesnake, good defensive play, but yeah, or uh, not enough Shadow Blades for LGDN. They they have to look at this game and say like we had the map control advantage. We had the we were able to split push them better. We were out farming them for a while. We should have had it. Mm -hmm. Frustrating game, and I mean, it has a big impact on this group B because. You look at Group B, and these are probably two of the weaker teams in the group. Yep. I think that's fair to say, so far. Uh, and now they've tied 1-1 with each other. So they both have a tough road ahead of them to finish top four. I mean, going from 0-2 to 2-2 two, two, two is like, all right, you know, first first series didn't go so well, but 0-2 to 1-3, eh. This it doesn't have, to, doesn't have the same momentum as a bounce back. You know? This this group is actually getting pretty tight, Yeah, I feel, in the middle there. There's a lot of teams, you know, teams like VP, Liquid, starting to emerge today a bit. Uh Kawa, do we have standings? We have proper standings, but... Okay, sweet. We're waiting for Orange and Team Liquid, which is about to be one <coughs> We're waiting for Orange and Team Liquid, which is about to be 1-1, one, one, most likely. So, Orange finally get on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think it's, I think for Liquid, they should be very happy that they took a game off of Orange and that they're sitting where they are. Is so. MUFC going to get any wins? They, they lost versus Dignitas 2-0, and if they can't beat Dignitas, who are they going to beat? Dignitas just beat LG China. Don't count, really? don't count my boys. LGD picked weird though. LGD, and they played... LGD had like normally LGD like they picked their really strong turtle lineup, strong defensive high ground type team. They had a razor mid for Yao. They had an enchantress, and they had a bane as their support. So they had no AOE. It was, it was a weird draft. But I mean, that being said, Dignitas played well. Sylar didn't have battle fury till like minute twenty or something. Like but that. MUFC are they are they going to win a game? What, what I mean, I, I don't like, know. They, they, I, are, it's a I tough don't even tournament. Know. Look, they just what? need to pick void. Void. I don't know. In in Dave, we trust. Contract I mean, I player. don't really like like. I thought the competition was really tight, but it just seems like they're they. I don't really want to say don't they don't belong, but they. I don't see them picking up any games in the group stage, which is. Which of these sad teams? I mean, I feel like they can take a game off of Zenith for sure, because Zenith is sloppy. Zenith plays some crazy drafts sometimes, and if MUC mm -hmm. can just bait them into a bad engagement, Zenith is that type of a team where I mean, at let's, their best, very hard to beat. But let's be honest here. Will it be? Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde? MUFC are DK Slayers. They're going to cheat all DK, DK Slayers. Play. DK Slayers? Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Really? No, wow. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have the bold prediction. Mm. No. I, uh, right. I, I actually think that Void really matches up well against the current metagame. That's when you pick 2 3 cores that goes BKB, you Chronosphere and be like, what's up? Jared was trying to talk. You just cut him off. Yeah, Jared, I'm sorry. Kawa. Kawa is here. Go Kawa. We have updated brackets. Orange is finally on the board. They have. They are one one versus Team Liquid. <coughs> yeah, one one versus Team Liquid. Uh, o two to Tongfu, but that's okay for Orange. They can lose to Tongfu. They can lose to Alliance two zero. But then they do have to win out. So uh, at this point, one one versus Liquid. If they win out, I think the at worst they'd be tied with Liquid, assuming yep. that Liquid's gonna. I mean, I think Liquid is gonna drop quite a few games to Tongfu and Alliance here as well. Uh, uh. You, you think they're going to beat those teams? Really? I'm going to call that they will finish in the winner bracket really? on the last slot. Who? Before. Remember, Complexity Liquid did last year. TO. Complexity made it in. Yep. So then who does that knock down for you? Orange? Orange. They're, they are not. So the top they're four right now are your top four? Yep. Colin. Well, I didn't, I didn't think Invictus Gaming would finish that high, but apparently oh, You so. guys have no faith in IG. IG has no. no mad let me let me saying the top four right now are, are going to be the top. I know, four. but he yeah. didn't believe in IG before. No, now I that they showed some results, you're like, oh, nice. I think what but. we all said was, let's see which IG it is. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. which is fair. And they beat Rattlesnake. Was does that tell you anything? And they tied. Uh, have they finished they're, they're, their fourth game yet? They're playing, no, they're playing Alliance, Alliance now. Yeah. Game just okay. started. So Alliance yeah. took game one versus them. Mm -hmm. uh, Another Timbersaw game. That they gave Bulldog Lone Druid again, by the way. So. Hey, I man. don't know. Hero he, got finished, nerfed. he finished the game with an MKB, a Basher, an Assault Caress, a Radiance on his bear, a Midas on his hero. No, I had no Midas on hero. Are you, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. It's just no triangle boots, yeah. So, that's oh, fine. wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's a crappy game now. But, but, uh, but yeah. let's look at Group A. Okay. I'm going to just say my boys from Taking Dignitas. Going top four? They're, they're, uh, 
I don't know about that, but they're doing well, and people have count them out, and I don't think you count the Inatasa. I do want to point out there are only two teams from North America in this tournament. You look at how many Asian teams there are, how many European teams. So if both Amer North American teams do finish top four, yeah, I'm just saying that is pretty sick. Yeah. That's very impressive. Imagine if Kaipi was here. Imagine if EG was here. Dude, I'm going to be having the USA chance when the Dignitas <laughs> versus TL in the grand finals. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so coming up next on this stream, guys, we have Zenith versus Navi. And that is a match that I'm really excited for. Pre uh, we can preview it more, but uh, how do you feel about these two teams going into it? I think it's one of the most interesting matches for today. Zenith just looked really sloppy in their previous game with the Windrunner going 0-6, just dying a lot in the offlane and really just relying on Isis as to carry them. You don't really yeah. want... I mean, they won, but still, it's, it's, it's not a strong victory by any means. It doesn't scream like, oh, man, we're going to do well in the group stage. It's just like, well, you just had Alchemist with Imbalanced Farm and Isis as playing really well. Right? That's yeah. how they won. Also, and let's let's remember that Fnatic just fed away an Aegis and three kills at, right after taking Roche. So it was like a lot of factors, but it wasn't like good play by their team. It was good play by Ice 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 that carried into victory. And hey, they're going to need a more solid performance than that if they Yamate want to Yamate walked more. up the hill and pressed like four buttons. Oh, with yeah. The refresher, I have the Ag refresher. <laughs> and then it was. True. Then he right clicked like five times. I like the Razor pick, though. That I was mean, sick. I they they love Razor. They I love think Razor. I'm using that hero. That hero is, is decent. Decent hero. I'm going to say, I'm, here's my prediction Navi's going to chill them, and they're going to do it with a punch, and people are going to get hooked. Wow, nice pun. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, all right. Well, so we'll, we'll save the rest of your puns. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, though. Zenith versus Navi is coming up next. Best of two. Uh, winner feeling better about their chances in Group A, but congratulations to LGD and Rattlesnake. They both have a win now. So we'll be right back, guys. There's more streams. Check out Joy Nota. Check out AC. Check out Cheever if you'd like. But Navi versus Zenith coming up here next. Stay with us.